Well, good morning, everybody. If you're new to the channel, we just want to welcome you. Leanne and I, the Lamb Seekers, and Annie. And if you're returning, we thank you for coming. We have 580 subscribers now. Praise the Lord. So that's awesome. Thanks for all the support, everybody. And I uh, just wanted to respond to a comment uh, on a video that I did a long time ago, but somebody just recently saw it about the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Somebody made a comment that really touched me because it's exactly what I thought when I first heard about the anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's presence. Okay, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? The sign of the cross, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, he's Trinity, three persons but one God. The Holy Spirit is God. Many people call him the forgotten God because, you know, we talk about the Father, we talk God, or people talk about God, who really they're referencing the Father usually, or they talk about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit, they say, well, what is that? Like in Acts 19, Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. That's how most Catholics are. Most Christians are like that. Because the Holy Spirit, we can identify with a father. We can identify with a person like us, Jesus. That's why God came in the flesh, so we could identify. He could identify with us. We could identify with him. But he said, it's better for me that I go because I'm sending to you another advocate, the spirit of truth. And Jesus taught us that, that is, he is a person. He talked about him like he, him, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He's a person. And in 1 John 2, 27, that is a verse that really changed my life. Uh, it says, the anointing that you have received from him, from Jesus, let it abide in you. And you don't, have, you don't need that any man should teach you because the, whole, the anointing will teach you all things. And so abide in him. So uh, a person on the channel, what they said was something like, uh, I didn't know that you could have this more than once. I'm looking forward to a refilling. And I just thought that was so, I said to Leanne, that's exactly what I said when I first heard about the anointing. Because as a, and the, in the video I was talking about that as a kid, uh, you know, especially after my mom passed away, God was really a comfort to me. And, you know, I'd be alone in my room, not knowing what to do. My mom was dead now and I would feel a presence of a person, but I knew it was God, a peace, a warmth come into my room and wash, like wash over me. And I really didn't understand what it was. I felt it was God. I didn't know it was the presence of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know it had a name, you know, the anointing. But in the Bible, that's what it's, that's what the Bible calls when the presence of the Holy Spirit is poured out. It's called the anointing. And so um, this person said, I didn't know you could have it more than once. Because a lot of people talk about uh, whether it's at baptism, when the priest anoints the baby, or confirmation when you're anointed, or when you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a moment of your life, you give yourself totally to Christ Jesus and you receive the Holy Spirit and you're totally, you know, changed. Like many people believe that that's a one and done kind of thing. And it's not, it really isn't. The, the Lord created us for relationship and he said, if you stay in my word, you'll be my disciples. He's always talking about following him, picking up your cross and following after me. He said when he walked by the John, uh, James and John on the, when they were working for their father, Zebedee, you know, uh, in the fishing boat, he walked by and said, follow me. And they dropped their nets and followed. It's all about, it's a personal relationship with Jesus. How can you have a relationship if you're not talking to someone all the time, every day? 
if you want to have a deep relationship uh, with somebody, if you want to have a good marriage, you have to talk, you have to communicate. And so um, with the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing. And so that's why we teach people, if you want to experience the anointing all the time, that's possible, first of all. And if you want to experience the anointing every day, yes, that's possible. How do you do that? Through praise and worship. Yes, other forms of prayer are good. Going to Mass is good. Praying the Rosary is good. You can experience the anointing in those forms of prayer. But I'll tell you, the quickest way into the glory zone, if you will, is praise and worship. Specifically, praying in the Spirit. The Bible calls praying in the Spirit, which is praying using the gift of tongues. If you don't have that gift, then you need to start praying for that and start looking that up in the scripture. What's that all about? 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 talks about that. Because scripture says in Psalm 22, it says, He inhabit, it says, You, O Lord, inhabit the praises of Israel. It doesn't say, You inhabit the thanksgiving of Israel. It doesn't say that you inhabit the petitions or devotions or even scripture reading of Israel. Obviously, God does inhabit all of that. But specifically, the Bible says you inhabit the praise of Israel. And the same word, well, it's not the same word, but it's the same similar idea that the Bible uses in the New Testament in 1 John 2, 27, like I mentioned before, that it says, abide, so you have received the anointing, abide in him. Jesus said, uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, you abide in me. He, he, it's like a command, abide in me. And in the Old Testament, it says, you, O Lord, inhabit the praise of Israel. So take that abiding from the New Testament, abiding, staying with someone, uh, sitting. It's like soaking uh, in, in oil, if you will. That's like uh, abiding in, in the presence of something. That's what Jesus is talking about. Well, how do you do that? If he inhabits, if God is in, if he inhabits, if he lives in, inhabit means to live in. If he inhabits the praise of Israel and the church is the new Israel and we're the church, the born again believers of Jesus, then our praise is what he lives in. That's amazing if you think about it. Yes, he lives in the heart of every believer, but he's not overflowing in the life of every believer. Every believer has a spark or an ember in their hearts, but they're not all on fire. You know when a person's on fire for God. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in the fruit of, of their life. Jesus said, by their fruits, you will know them. Okay? That means you'll, he says, ah, uh, when I come to earth, is there going to be faith on the earth? He said, how I long to see the fire kindled on the earth. He wants us all to be on fire. He actually, in Revelation, uh, vomits out the people that are lukewarm. He doesn't need more Christians, okay? He needs more people that are on fire for Jesus. He doesn't need more people that, that go to church, that call themselves Christians. He needs more people that are full of the anointing. Like David said, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. What was he doing in Psalm 23? In all the Psalms, praising the Lord. So how do you do praise and worship? We'll talk about that in another video, but just basically put on your praise and worship music or just start to talk, to, to say from your heart phrases of praise. Praise you, Lord. I worship you. I adore you. I lay my life before you. You know, all these beautiful worship songs are from a, a person that had a heart encounter with Jesus that was trying to just worship him. That's what praise is all about. Uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says praise is the highest form of prayer because it is totally for God. Okay, that's why in the Mass, in the Liturgy of the Hours, the it's mostly all praise because it acknowledges God for who he is. It's not even thanking him for something he's done for you because that's kind of about you too. 
It's just, you are the Lord, you are the Most High. Like all those uh, titles, you're the God of hosts. You know, just praising him has so much power. And if you do that, and if you have the gift of tongues, you know what I'm talking about. But if you just start to praise him from your heart, you will feel the anointing. You will feel God's presence. I'm telling you. And once you get hooked on that, there's no high like the most high. And it's changed my life. You think we could have gone through Leanne having a stroke, uh, us losing our best friend, our spiritual director who died suddenly, uh, my mom dying when I was a kid and all the traumas. You think we could have gone through that without the anointing? Well, we couldn't have. 